It's just gone 7 o'clock, it is, on a Small Business Connect Radio, the 10th of February 2015, the second week of our candid conversations with the CIPC Commissioner Astrid Ludin. Good evening to you and welcome to it. My name is Herman, your host. Very honoured to be part of this programme up until 8 o'clock, so looking forward to your um, interaction and communication throughout the show tonight. I'm not alone. Let me just quickly round up the, the guys, uh, give him a bit of a shout out. Christoph Oosthuizen, the publisher of Small Business Connect, down in Cape Town. By the way, I'm in the beautiful, not windy, the beautiful, friendly city of Port Elizabeth. And he's in the mother city. Christoph, hi. Good evening and welcome. Uh, good evening, um, Herman. Uh, yes, uh, the second of our calls with uh, the Commissioner. And I must say, um, I was quite impressed by the uh, questions that were raised in the first and uh, the ability that, that we show, that the Commissioner showed in answering most of them. Uh, I do know that we do, couldn't cover all the questions that were raised in last week's call, uh, but we do um, have ways of addressing that and maybe we can talk a bit about that later too. All right, cool. I'll touch on that just a little bit later on, as you say. Let me just welcome the Commissioner back again. Astrid, good evening and welcome. Uh, good evening, Herman. Great to be back. Great. Thank you very much. Looking forward to your company once again. And our guest for tonight is an entrepreneur also based in the mother city, uh, Bulelang. Bulelang, good evening. Uh, good evening, uh, Herman. Good evening, uh, Commissioner uh, and uh, the listeners. Awesome stuff. I'll come back to you later on in the show so that you can tell us a bit about your background and also give you that opportunity to have a chat with the Commissioner. Just a note, Christoph did mention earlier on that uh, some of the questions that were not answered live during the show last week will be forwarded to the CIPC and um, I think we just need to work out the system. I think um, during the, because we've got about nine weeks to go, some of the questions the Commissioner and her team will respond, but at the end of the this show, um, the nine weeks, we're going to produce a document that we're going to share with everyone that has registered so that you can have a, a look at some of the questions that possibly were not covered um, on the show tonight. As always, we only got an hour, so best we get along with it. We are also on Twitter at SASB Connect and also on Facebook that's facebook.com forward slash SASB connect. I'm in Port Elizabeth, Christoph and Mulelang in the mother city and Astrid, I think it's in Pretoria or am I being... <laughs> Pretoria, That's yes. That's correct. Awesome yes. stuff. All right, I think we're going to get right into it. Um, Commissioner, one of the things that were asked last week and it came up time and time again um, over the, the last week that we've been um, uh, in conversation with yourselves and the other guys. The issue of the, the call center, uh, and I think after this, myself and Christoph and the team, we just need to uh, come up with an idea of, on how to share this, because I think it's something that's going to keep coming back, and to be fair on other questions, we can't, we cannot just go back to, uh, to it all the time. But just, again, just to get it out, three minutes after seven, the issue of the call center, what is happening, Commissioner? Well, the, the issue of the call centers is probably one of the most difficult issues that we've been trying to deal with. And as I said um, in our conversation last week, it's been an issue for CIPC since its inception and, and for CIPRO before then. So we've never really managed to have a successful call center. And in order for us to be able to deal with calls effectively, we need to be able to give a call center the call center agents access to our systems. They need to be able to check the progress of the transactions. They need to be able to go in and verify things. And that is unfortunately only possible at our premises. So um, we have been um, engaging internally to try and put together a call center again. And um, I think at this stage we've got uh, 12 people willing to serve on the call center. We need to work through the logistics of it and we're hoping that we can have at least a small call center up and running by the end of March. We still need to ensure that all the telephony issues are sorted out internally. Um, I think the reality and, and uh, this is again, this is something I said last week, is that our staff are focused primarily 
on processing transactions. And then the second um, focus is on resolving queries. And as part of resolving queries, they obviously deal with emails, they deal with the query resolution system, and they also deal with calls. Generally, when they, we experience high volumes in particular areas, people are not very responsive to queries and to calls. And I think it's just because they are processing greater volumes. Um, but, you know, I, I think what's, what's certainly been interesting is listening, taking, getting some of the feedback last week as well. One caller mentioned that, you know, SARS has managed to do a call center and they have a quick turnaround time. I think the reality of the SARS experience is what they had is, is a call center that could answer calls. They couldn't resolve any queries. Sure. Um, and I think, you know, that, that's, that's been our problem as well. Even if we have a call center, it's the ability to, re to, to resolve the queries, which I think is probably more important um, for listeners. Cool. Moving right along, thanks for that, Commissioner. Um, Gerard Kruger, he asked or comment, I did send tickets in number, uh, I think the, the reference numbers of those tickets. Uh, no answer, and did send Astrid emails and no answer yet. Did you get a lot of emails from entrepreneurs <laughs> last week? Well, you know, I usually get anywhere from 200 to 300 emails a day. Per day. And I only really have time to deal with it in the evenings. So that is the constraint. Um, I do apologize. I, I actually thought about that because I... I've been working through my emails, you know, as I have time during the day and, and of course, in the evenings. But I, I really do just request that people are patient. Um, when we have difficulties anywhere in the organization, the Deputy Commissioner and I can always tell which areas those are because of the volume of queries that we get in those areas. So. On the query resolution system, what I would like to encourage people to do is not just submit more than one query. Um, please submit the one query. Um, we are reviewing the system and making sure that the staff, increasingly making sure that the staff respond. So, but again, it is, you know, it's just unfortunate. It's as these new systems settle down in the organization and as we are able to be more efficient in some areas, we will improve the query resolution. Mm. You also mentioned last week, Commissioner, that you've uh, implemented an incentive program or system to some of your staff. How, how has that um, been, been taken up by your staff? Well, we implemented a in what we call an incentive scheme. It's, it's, it is an incentive for staff to increase the production for new company registration. And last week, I think I reported that the staff were processing company registration applications received on the 14th. This week, uh, this morning, they were busy with the 28th of January. So they are catching up, um, and I think by the end of February, they will be back up to, you know, on, on, to, on their normal turnaround time. All right. Just want to say hello to Craig up in Joburg, and uh, Pilate Moyo from Pilate Pilate Moyo, uh, Umzansi Consultancy, based in Jobek. Shout out to you guys. Just want to say hello to some of the guys that have uh, logged in and they're also telling us where they're from as well. Charmaine Godard from Charmaine Godard Accounting here in the Eastern Cape. Hey, your fellow Eastern Cape Tony in there. <laughs> All right, cool. Don't forget to send through your questions as you, send a, as you tell us who, who you are and where you're from. Do submit your questions as well. The commissioner is at hand and will be with us up until 8 o'clock. Sanitha Dundre, uh, Dun hope I got your surname right, password loss for CIPC cannot get MOI for new company registration or for new company that has been registered. How, how do you people, I mean, just simple thing, getting your password reactivated again? Uh, the, you need to log a query on the system, um, on the query system, and we have people in IT that review those queries and then reset the password. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, sometimes people just send me the email directly, but I think it's best to actually log it on the, on the system. If you've logged it on the system and you haven't had a response, then, you know, send me, the send me your request. 
and I, I forward it directly to people. What happened, let me let me explain a little bit about the password issue. Um, we've had, you know, we have a lot of people who've signed up over time um, and sometimes people have more than one customer code. In the new systems that we implemented last year, each person can only have one customer code. So sometimes what happens is the system doesn't allow you to, uh, to um, enter your password because it's a, and it, it requests you to contact CIPC. That is because you've got more than one client, a customer code, and you need to select one. So that's why we ask you to contact us. Otherwise, you, um, as I said, you send us an email, I mean, a, a query about a password reset, and we reset it internally. One of the other changes that we implemented in the um, new e-services that we launched last year was that the directors, one of the directors of the companies or the directors of the company that has been registered, they are the ones who can download the documents. So if an intermediary makes the application, um, the transaction will be processed, but it's only the director who can actually, one of the directors who can download the documents. Mm. So right. they need a customer code, they need their own customer code, and then they can access the e-services. Okay. Another question comes through from uh, Richards, uh, I think it's Richards Bay from Lindokutle. I would like to ask who can I contact with regards to companies launched last year? I'm assuming this says as there has been no uh, communication in this regard. It's Lindokutle in Richards Bay, I think. Um, well, it definitely is a problem if your companies haven't been registered. Um, there could be a number of reasons. So I think it's best if you uh, log a query on the query resolution system, um, which is on the website, and indicate what the tracking number is for the company. Those companies should have been registered. If they were not registered, as I said, there are a number of reasons why they may not be. Um, they may not have received the documents in time. They may not have received the payment in time. So those are the kind of reasons that would have resulted in a rejection. Mm. Okay. Another question from, uh, I think it's Faith Nguyenya. Commissioner, we are receiving complaints from practitioner, practitioners who have registrations outstanding from November 2014. Queries have been lodged and no responses have been received yet. Well, the, 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 bis, the new registration or the company registration area has definitely been inundated. Um, so if the queries have been logged and you haven't received a, a response, then uh, for those outstanding transactions, send, it's, it's, it's better if you send them to me in a list. We did have a problem last year. Um, in, we uh, um, had the problem in October and in November when um, some people internally thought uh, they could circumvent the system. And um, it resulted in some of the transactions uh, not going through and, and essentially the supporting documents having to be resubmitted. So it could be those transactions. Uh, we know of about 2,500 that we've dealt with quite a large number already. Um, but we deal with those on a, on a um, base, you know, as we receive them because we haven't got really got a method, um, a, a way in which we can find those transactions in the in the logs. So it is better for if if you have a transaction that was lodged in October or November that hasn't been processed, please send us those lists. You can send them to me. All right. And I think there's another question from um, I think it's a note from Renee which we did uh, touch on but I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it again. Renee says, can we suggest that the questions posed and not addressed during this broadcast are at least responded to by the CIPC in the days following these sessions? Uh, it would go a long way in reinforcing the sentiments of problem solving. Many questions were raised last week which were not addressed. Yeah, Renee, we did uh, mention that um, unfortunately we cannot cover all the questions, but every single question is being monitored and is being saved and will be attended to in the next few days uh, or, or weeks, depending on how the, the team at CFPC handles the, the, the load. 
So I uh, just thought let me, uh, I point that out to Renee. And then um, Madeleine, where can uh, we get training for CIPC? Uh, let me just go there quickly. There's a lot of things that are not very obvious. Like you cannot submit a JPEG, only PDF. Not only that, but more information in general company registration and annual returns. That I think is a is a very important request. We definitely need to um, uh, provide that training. I did after the show last week. I did uh, go back to the office and I asked the relevant unit to set this up, and I will follow up with them again tomorrow. I asked them to in fact arrange either uh, maybe a webinar where they can try and uh, show this to people who want to sign up, yeah. or alternatively actually do a roadshow around the country and set up, you know, uh, schedule sessions where they can do demonstrations and where people can ask questions. The issue about the JPEG is very important. I'm glad it was raised because, you know, when you go, when you submit a document and you go, um, you try and track your transaction on the e-services portal, you know, there's a, there's a section that allows you to look at transaction status. Often it says um, the image, you know, I can't remember exactly now, but effectively that the image hasn't been uploaded. Um, what happens on a JPEG uh, uh, image is the staff can't view it and they have no way, they also can't save it. So they can't process it. It's very important that it's either a TIFF image or that it's a PDF. Uh, Herman, can anybody hear me? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm busy reading a question and my mute button is on. <laughs> my button. I, I thought uh, I might have lost you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, maybe this is the time. Sorry, Christopher, I forgot. You said something about the poll that uh, our listeners and viewers can get involved in? Yes, that's correct. Um, so, uh, just, just for interest's sake, in terms of... Uh, measuring or gauging the, the sentiment of people on the call, um, what we can do is, um, if I can get this right, um, uh, let's get to the polls, and then we can start a poll asking a question, um, and you'll be able to vote for it on the right-hand side of your, uh, of your screen. Uh, you should be able to see um, the poll tab there, uh, where people have been chatting, there's a tab that says polls. If you click on that, you should be able to participate in the poll. Um, whoops. Uh, let me let me come back to me, um, Herman. Uh, I think I think the poll uh, backfired on us. Let's let's try it in five minutes again or four minutes. I'll set it up again quickly. Hopefully, I didn't catch you off guard there, uh, <laughs> Annika. Um, I'll, I'll read a question from Annika quickly, but I think at this point, let me also bring in Bulelang, an entrepreneur who's our guest on the show, to have a conversation with you. Bulelang, uh, Ast uh, Astrid, the commissioner, is at hand. Uh, can you come in there quickly? Okay, I think uh, his internet connection might be playing games just like it did with me last week. Okay, we'll carry on. We'll come back to Bulelang in just a bit. Annika said, I have submitted a company registration in December and I haven't received any documents. What's the turnaround time for such applications? That application, well, if it's an electronic application, it should have been processed by now. Our service delivery standard on electronic transactions is, um, I think it's three working days, but the mm -hmm. staff is way out of that. Um, as indicated, they are currently working on the 28th of January. So if you've submitted an application before then and um, haven't heard anything, you need to follow up with us. Would you say she must, or do you mean just follow up in terms of the progress or log a new application? There are two things you can do. You can The first thing is to check on the transaction status, which mm -hmm. you will find on, on e-services. It says something, I think it's called transaction status. And that will give you a fair level of detail on what, the, what progress has been made on your transaction. So maybe I can just also explain to listeners how this works. So 
you will apply online on uh, e-services and submit data through to us and then you will be you will receive a form that has uh, requires you to sign or the, the, the incorporators to sign in the directors and then that is resubmitted to us preferably by way of email the staff on the inside what happens is when they when this email is received the first step is that they need to index it so what it means is they assign it to a particular number and it gets saved um, so it's like an electronic filing system and then they um, pull up the actual original application and link the two and it gets usually gets approved or if for some reason something's not clear it will get rejected so if the image is not clear it would get rejected um, so the the transaction status shows you exactly where it is in all of this whether it's been queued whether it's been indexed whether it's not been received so if if the transaction status says the documents have not been received and you know that you've sent them then you need to log a query with us so because then we need to go into the logs and we need to find the transaction or otherwise the staff will need to ask you to reapply and we'll, we'll have to queue your ap application again so if okay. if none if, if if this hasn't happened then um, and you know you've submitted and it, it doesn't show then what you need to do is you need to log a query on the website on the query resolution system mm -hmm. um, and if you don't get your response within 10 days then please escalate it either to the CIPC ombud or you can escalate it to me. All right. A, a quick one there from Nsla Law says are tax registrations also being done at CIPC? Excuse me, are what tax registrations? Tax Tax registrations are only those done in SARS. Well, what happens is because we've got a live uh, direct link with CI uh, with SARS, when we register a company, we push that data through to SARS immediately, and SARS then registers the company. They send us the tax number back, but they will also notify um, the person of the tax number. So you don't need to register for tax separately. But of course, for that or any other of the other SaaS products, you would need to apply separately. Okay. And before I bring in Bulelang, Craig says, "Why is the website so poorly designed?" Well, I'd like to understand why you believe it's poorly designed because we actually spent quite a lot of time redesigning it. Yeah. Um, we did subject it to user training, uh, user testing, but. I think you know they, there's a lot more that needs to be done in that regard. Mm -hmm. What was important to us was to get something more user friendly out and to provide more information. Uh, it always surprises me how little people actually use the information that is on the website because many of the questions we get, we know that the answers are actually on the website. Yeah. But if you have any suggestions on how to improve it, please send them through. Craig, there you go. The, the ball is back in your court make connections with the Astrid and the CIPC on how to improve the website. And also on the website, Bulelang, please get ready there, my man. Uh, Vitor says, in the system we have a column uh, status, or a column called, is it statuses, or uh, I hope it's not a typo. Could we have a glossary of what they mean? So we all have one definition. I think he's uh, referring to some of the terms that are on the website. Okay, um, I'm not sure exactly, I, I, maybe if I see the question I can um, give a better answer. I'm not sure that I would be... Yeah, I think he's looking for almost like index, uh, what, what a closer of what? Uh, some of the terms that are being used in, in the website. So, on the website, okay, so for example when we talk about your status, are you... Um, Active or in deregistration, those uh, yeah, are I those think, the kind of statuses. Yeah, I I think so. Because he he I think he had a typo here, but I think he wanted to say statuses. Yeah. Okay, but, but I think we'll certainly look at that. Um, and if there's anything we can do to to make things clearer, I think that would only benefit everybody. All right, cool. It's been noted there, Vitor. Uh, Bulelang, it's your opportunity. The uh, commissioner is ready to hear what you've got to say. 
Hi, Herman. Uh, hi, listeners. Uh, it's Pulelan Rakepile from uh, Cape Town. Uh, I'm in the uh, ICT consulting business. Uh, uh, that's what I do. And uh, I think I came here uh, to just mention my experience with the system, uh, the CIPC system. Uh, I, I, I've been uh, blocked from the beginning. Uh, I haven't seen the new system inside. Because I, wa I registered uh, the old system, and what I wanted to do now was to, to use the new system. But uh, it, I couldn't get in because I forgot the password. Then when I asked for a new password, uh, what it did, it, it said I should, uh, I, 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 I should put in my details. I put them there. Then it suggested that I contact uh, CIPC. And that's where the, uh, where, where the problem started, because I had to go through the call center. As the call center uh, used not to have an option uh, to contact a, a person directly. It would give you automated responses, but later it changed, and it did have an option to hold for, for a person. But uh, I haven't been able to contact that person. And uh, just uh, this week, I've had two long holds until the call drops itself. So that is what I wanted uh, the commissioner to know about, that uh, the option that gives you an ability to speak with a person doesn't get through to a person, maybe because the person is busy, maybe because uh, there are less uh, people there. Uh, maybe the, uh, as she said, uh, she said she's going to uh, get more people in the call center. Uh, Herman, is it, can I can I respond? Yeah, yeah sure you can. Uh, Hi, Bolela. Yes, I'm still here. Um, Hi, how are you, Commissioner? I'm good, thanks. And you? Um, I'm well. Bulalang, the, the complaint that you've uh, raised, uh, you know, is one that I see frequently. And, um, you know, I think the, the reality is, we re well, we receive a lot of those. What, ha what's, what probably happened is that you've registered with us more than once. Uh, because in the old system, we would allow you to create a new customer code. But what we now do is we link that customer code to your ID. So we won't allow you to have more than one customer code. And that's why it's asked you to contact us. So to contact us, I know the, the instinct would be to call us. But uh, your experience is the experience of many other people, unfortunately. Uh, so we have put in place on the website a query resolution system which will allow you to choose options and yours would be a password reset. And that query will then be received by somebody and dealt with. If, if you don't get satisfaction, um, we do have the, on, on the website you will see the details of um, the ombud, the CIPC internal ombud. And I have also made my own email address available. What I would recommend is that you definitely send me an email uh, this evening and I will forward it to the relevant person. They are very efficient when the emails get through to them. So we'll oh, okay. deal with that very quickly. Uh, this morning, uh, Hammond did give me uh, the email address. Or was it yesterday? Uh, but I did, I, I did send uh, an email. I think it's this morning. Yeah, did you send an morning. email to me? Yes, uh, to A. Ludin. Uh, yeah, PC. It started with A. Ludin. Okay. Yeah, that's the, the, the A. Ludin at CIPC. .co 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 the email address. All right. Yes. Right, I didn't see it, I, but I, you know, I started at the earliest emails this morning, so I apologize if I didn't see it. I'll get to it this okay. evening. All right. No, that is fine. Was that mm -hmm. the... Oh, man, the May I, butt in, may I butt in here in terms of perhaps the most productive way for us to deal with the questions that are raised? 
Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, so our commitment at Small Business Connect is to try to systemize in some way the questions because as the commission now noted, noted uh, a lot of the questions or the, the some of the frustrations that people have are common, you know, sort of uh, people have similar issues. So um, we do have a good chunk of questions now already from the two shows that we've heard and we will get more as we go along in the coming weeks. Um, what we can do is to systemize that. So yes, uh, 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 send your email to the commissioner as I think we've noted, you know, sort of if she in the evenings when she gets home is able to attend to it, it is going to be a slow pace of attending to those uh, emails that people send. Um, uh, if, it, if, if, if the questions are, are easy to answer and they've been answered in the show before or we can easily access the information that people need, um, uh, a systemized way of presenting that uh, perhaps through our website is uh, uh, perhaps going to be answering the questions quicker and in a more effective way for people to use. So uh, <clears throat> can we say, can we make the commitment or rather let me say we can make the commitment that the questions as they are raised uh, will be answered. In fact, um, one of our reporters, uh, Daniel Bugen, has been tasked with exactly this task to systemize the questions into something that we can answer easily. Um, I think we must escalate the pace at which we provide those answers and not leave it till the end of the project, which was the plan. So by the next show, I think we'll be able to announce um, exactly how we're going to do this. Um, in recording the questions. So we do have um, our info at smallbusinessconnect.co.za um, email address that people can send the questions to. You can post your questions in the chat here. We are copying them and using them. Um, and also on our Facebook page, uh, uh, we are asking for more questions as we go along. So in any, any of those means of submitting questions to us to be incorporate, to incorporate those into um, answering um, would be great. Of course, you are free to also email the, the, the commissioner and see if, you know, sort of she, by midnight tonight or tomorrow at midnight, have answered your question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, um, yeah, um, in this way we can all contribute perhaps to uh, compiling um, answers, in a, in a way compiling a user guide by users um, in terms of using this, this new online system. Awesome. Th thank you very much for that, Christopher. I think the... By, by next week, as you say, we'll announce the how, how these questions are going to be dealt with. Because I think nine weeks <laughs> for that handbook is a, is a bit of a a long wait for for some of the guys. But also at the same time, guys, I might um, also come out and say I think a bit of patience as well, uh, since the commission, as we've heard, she's um, tries to get through to these as well. It's not a defense on her part. It's just I think more of a a um, a personal note as well. I mean, get bombarded over 200 emails a day, but still carry on with your day-to-day -day duties as well. So I think, yeah, let's, let's be a bit of a, a patient a patient as well. Um, Christoph, can we do the poll or should we carry on with another question? Um, and then we'll, we'll come back to, to you with the poll in just a little bit. Yes, we can do the poll now, I hope. <laughs> uh, okay, let's give it a shot one more time. Okay. You can, you'll see, uh, you should be seeing on your screen now, um, in the middle of the screen, an example of what is on the right-hand side of your, um, or don't you see that? I, I don't see my screen, in fact. But if you go to the right, if you go to the right area where you've been chatting away, typing away, um, you'll see there's one of the tabs there that says polls. Um, and this is now directed at everyone that is on the call. There you can vote on our um, on a poll on the poll yeah I think the uh, question is how is the new CIPC system doing and there are four options that guys can just click and vote in yes now if I look on my screen I don't actually don't see the the ability to vote so I'm not sure can you see uh, maybe you can help me here is that yeah. poll can people vote can, is there a vote option there can you vote yeah, I think you're going to have to click the, not the start call thingy. Well, uh, just they, 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 thing. they, they, they all, they all disappeared now again. So I think uh, uh, the, the gods aren't with us tonight in terms of having a poll. Okay, I, I'll come to your defense. It has worked before <laughs> a few times. So. 
I think a bit of teething problems the game there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, we'll bring we'll bring it we'll bring it back uh, in the future. Maybe it will will we'll work then. We'll work again. Okay, cool. Thanks thank, thanks for that, Christoph. Thirty five minutes after seven, uh, we're still with the commissioner, Astrid Luding. Uh, I'll ask Bulelang uh, on WhatsApp if he has another question later on. But moving on, we've got a Prem uh, Ramor. Uh, the there's a question there, Commissioner. She says that Senem captured incorrectly by CIPC in the CK2A document. Request sent to rectify and no response. You need to log a. I'm not sure where the request to rec for rectification was sent. What you need to do is you need to log it on the query resolution system uh, under corrections. And then you need to just upload the document to okay. you know the original document. Yeah, uh, from her question. True. Yeah, from sorry, from her question, it says request to rectify uh, was sent and no response yet. But it depends on where it was sent. Okay, I think cool. what happens often is people think that it's the business unit that captured the application that also makes the corrections. It's not. It's a different business unit in ICT because in order to make a correction they need to actually, it's a, it's a more specialized um, a more specialized authority, they have greater authority and so that's oh. why it needs to be dealt with more cautiously mm -hmm. um, and so you know that's where the, the, the emails used to go to, uh, there was a corrections email address but that has all now been incorporated into the query resolution system. If people don't have joy out of that you please need to let us know um, also on the um, on this show, because what happens on the query resolution system? Some of the business units are very are doing very well with resolving their queries. It's just that other business units tend to not be so um, diligent. Yes. And my understanding was that the corrections uh, group was actually dealing with this quite expeditiously. If that's not the case, then please let us know. Okay. I think uh, someone earlier on whom I asked in a private chat to, to tell us more, but uh, I think it was Nishal, he never came back with uh, a proper, I think, feedback that I asked for. Uh, his question was around corruption. How is the C CIPC fighting corruption? I don't know what to, to what extent. I asked him to elaborate, but he hasn't um, come back to me. So Nishal, if you can come back to, to me with that question. Um, then I can pose it properly to the commissioner. Another question there from Elizabeth it says, "In November, I've received registration documents for a company that I didn't submit. Uh, the money was deducted from my account. Locked the query and no response." Okay. Um, so, what happened? Sorry, was that when was that in November or September? November. In November. Okay. That I think she, if it's been logged, can she just follow up with an email with, or just send the details through to the, the, the chat or either or send me an email so that we can follow up on that. Okay, cool. They will need to just investigate what happened. All right, cool. Um, the other one, this one from Albert, quite a long one, so I'll try and make sense of it there, Commissioner. It says, uh, Albert from DNL Associates in Pretoria. A client, let's call him client A, got approval from another company, B, to use their name. We assisted B to change their name away from the name. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to make sense of it. We also had a lady from CIPC who advised us on the process. But now CIPC won't register that name for our client. Why were B allowed to use the name but CIPC won't allow A to use the same name. I don't know if you understand the question. No, I'm not sure that I understand the question. I think I need to just look at it in a little bit more detail. Um, what happens is if you want to use the name that somebody else has registered, so what, what we need is if, let's say I, Herman, let's say you register a name. Yeah, it's 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 registered under your customer code, so that name belongs to you. Sure. Now I want to register a company with your name. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen in order for the CIPC to be able to process that transaction, you need to authorize 
the transfer of a name to me and you need to attach it. There needs to be an affidavit attached. Otherwise, CIPC can't allow you to do that. In the beginning, about four years ago, and before we implemented, not quite four years ago, probably three and a half, before we implemented this control, we had a huge problem with uh, companies being registered, you know, people alleging that their names were stolen and companies being registered with other people's names. So that's why we, we no longer, you know, we have these controls in place around it. I'm not sure if that is exactly what the case is here. So we need to just establish that. Okay, I think a follow-up to that, you, I think you did mention in uh, responding. Agent van der Waard, I think, is asking the same question. I have re requested a name already registered by a customer to be transferred to my profile to register the company on that specific name. I think that's what you just uh, spoke about. There must be an affidavit and authorization from that user who owns that name or who has registered the name to be transferred to to H and Van der Waard. Am I understanding correctly? That's correct. All right. So um, yeah, guys, they I think Albert and H and Van der Waard. Uh, you've heard the response from the commissioner. So uh, good luck with you guys, the uh, Madeline. Um, no, I'm not going to go to this. You did touch on it. Uh, it's, it's all about um, feedback uh, and the, 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 the time and the JPEG and the PDF as well. Um, moving on to Erna Fouri. Um, she says, from Exico Accountant in North Cliff. We experience, that, uh, we experience that some of our transactions do not appear on the tracking system. This results in us knowing whether we should submit it again. Please comment on that. It's uh, this is a, a matter that I, in fact somebody just discussed with me yesterday. I think you know it. it, it let, let's say you email a document to us and it's a manual transaction. Until that transaction is tracked or what we now call indexed, um, you won't know whether or not it's there, and that's why you need to look at the transaction status. Um, sometimes the tracking, there can be delays on tracking. I think we, we acknowledge that and we are developing internally some standards around that, how quickly transactions need to be tracked. So at this stage, we have no way of notifying you that the transaction has been received. I think what you need to do is if you submit it by email, you need to keep that email as proof um, because if let's say two weeks have passed and you see that your transaction has not been tracked, you do need to start following up with us on that because your transaction should be tracked within that amount of time. Yeah. So right. I don't know if, that's, if that answers the question. If not, please just maybe provide a little bit more detail. Right, cool. Erna Fari, that's uh, uh, the response to your question. Uh, Nsalo asks, will this show be available for download? I did respond to that. Yes, a YouTube link. The show is currently being recorded and a YouTube link will be shared. I think almost immediately, I'll have to confirm with uh, Christoph there, almost immediately after 8 o'clock you can um, have a link. Otherwise, we think to be on the safe side. Tomorrow morning the link will be published. But before we say goodbye, I'll confirm with Christoph as well. Um, Razia says, submitting queries on the query system is clearly not working. I've been waiting for over a month for certain queries to be answered. Um, is it also a, a backlog issue there, Commissioner? The query system, as I said, some managers clear their queries every day and other managers are not as diligent. Uh, it's more of a performance management issue on our part. And um, I think, you know, if, if there are particular areas that the queries are not getting answered, please let us know. We do look at the reports. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's difficult because what happens is um, people put the wrong categories on their queries. So, for example, you know, it could be a query related to trademarks, but people choose a company um, category. And then the trademark people won't answer it and the company people won't answer it because it doesn't belong. The one can't see it and the other one says it's not our category. So it's little things. It's still, you know, it's still a new system. It's only been implemented, it's, it is four months old in the organization, but it's, it's quite a departure from the way 
it has been done in the past. And it requires a lot more accountability or it enables a lot more accountability. We now need to be more consequent with it internally in the organization. All right. We've got 15 minutes left for the show. See, I'm not um, avoiding your question. Uh, the commissioner did uh, highlight on when we when the show started. I mean, Sia is saying he sent an email. It's almost seven days now, still no document, um, and he supplied us with his email address as well. Uh, the, I think the commissioner will be attending to that with the guys as well in the office, um, so we can move on to another question. I'm not avoiding your question, this year. Um, um, Sia's question that he did, is that he emailed his document for company registration seven days ago, or was it an email that he sent? Yeah, I think he said, um, do, 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 I sent you a complaint for a company submitted last year, December, but still not registered. You told me that it would be resolved in a day or two, and you forwarded the message to Glory. Um, it's almost seven days now, and still no documents. I think he's waiting for Regist company registration documents. Yes. Okay. I um, I will find your email again, Sia. I've just had another one as well that somebody sent me on my email address. Um, similar uh, similar um, complaint. Oh, that is Sia. Sia Bonga. The, the, the PTYguy.com. Ah, yes. I just responded to him, but maybe he didn't get my email. Oh, okay. There we go, Sia. <laughs> Uh, another one from Charmaine. It says, I have zipped and emailed CK2 document uh, on more than one occasion for a client since September last year and still have no progress or acknowledgement of the change request. Who and how can I resolve this problem? That's well, the, those documents probably will not have been received by us. We have very clear specifications around uh, what documents what size of documents we can receive. Mm. So you need to scan the documents. If it's a scanned, it's, it would be a scanned document, I think. Um, mm. The resolution that we recommend is 150 DPU, and most of those emails come through to us. I think when you zip it, it's going to still be too big to get through our um, the firewall. In fact, it's not our firewall. It's the DTI's firewall that limits it. Um, okay. So it's very important that you follow, that when you send us the emails, you send them according to the specifications that are on the website. Okay. And then Teco says, the system doesn't allow me to complete my company registration online. Seems to be a glitch. We really need a call center commissioner. It's almost like pleading there. There are two, one of two problems um, if you are unable to uh, complete your company registration. The first issue that you need to check is whether or not you're using a compatible browser. We recommend Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. The other thing you need to ensure, whether you do a director change or a company registration, is that you use the correct contact details for the directive. We, the system will not allow you to duplicate contact details. So most people who give me send me the que the query that you've just or the question that you've just sent yep. come back to me almost very shortly after I have replied to them saying they've tried Google Chrome and it works like a dream. So All try right. it. Okay, I'm going to try and squeeze in this one. It's another long one, so bear with me. I have submitted a company name change. All the documents have been submitted. Three weeks have transpired, and uh, yet no progress has been made. When tracking a note, it indicates that no records have been sub, uh, have been captured. No records have been captured. This is an urgent application as my clients are waiting to open a bank account and trade with the new company name. How can I request that this process not be investigated and the process sped up? Um, yeah. Uh, well, has if the transaction's been tracked? Remember the turnaround time for a name change is 15 working days um, from the date of tracking. So what you need to determine is on what date it was tracked. Uh, to my knowledge and the feedback that I get from the section is that there's no backlog in the section that they're up to date and within their turnaround times. So I think what you need to do is check on transaction status. If the, if the document hasn't been tracked, I think you mentioned the document hasn't been received or 
I think you need to just get the exact definition uh, description on the uh, tra under transaction status. Okay. Um, remember when uh, the transaction is billed, so when it shows up, when it's deducted from your customer account, that's the date that it's either tracked or indexed. Okay. So that's when we recognize its existence in the organization. And, and if that hasn't happened, either you know the, the email didn't come through or they weren't able to view the image because it was in the wrong format or you also you, you didn't indicate the subject clearly in the email address so there are lots of reasons why you know we may not have received it mm -hmm. um, but if you you know the, 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 the way to deal with it is to uh, submit a query on the query resolution system or you can send an email uh, on a name change to Lucinda Steenkamp, which and her her email address is l Steenkamp at cipc.co.za. L Steenkamp at cipc.co.za. Okay. All right. I've got another one from Pilate Moyo. I uh, hope I got the name right. Why are close corporation conversions taking too long? I submitted one in July 2014 and got it only last week. The other one submitted uh, in August 2014 and it still reads in process. I think I need to uh, investigate that because I am also getting a lot of complaints about uh, conversions. Conversions are manual processes and it's possible you know that you submitted those documents manually to us and that um, somewhere in the process uh, what what happened? Let me explain. What happens is when you submit it manually to us, it needs to be scanned and sent from another office through to the the, the back office, which then captures it. So there are things that can go wrong in that process. I don't know if you emailed the document to us, then we'd need to just understand and investigate what happened. Okay. You should definitely log a query, and if you're not getting the response on the query system, you need to escalate it. Okay, it's now eight minutes before eight o'clock. Um, I think there's another one from Renee. It says, if we have uh, opened queries via the QRS and escalated with no res with no resolution, and then escalated to the Ombud, Ombud has also not responded or actioned. We have three issues outstanding since October, November 2014. What recourse do we have? Uh, or do we now have? Yes, it's unfortunate. Uh, these matters should be resolved within this escalation. And I do get a lot of queries, so I think your last resort would be to send me an email. Um, I just want to encourage people. I, I, get, I understand the frustration that people have that um, you know matters aren't resolved. But mm. I really want to encourage people to follow the processes because it's very difficult for me to see. I, I have some people that never log a query, never, never send any emails to anybody, they come straight to me. And you know, the first few emails I will always be uh, very understanding. But when I see a pattern um, and I see that people, you know, people who are intermediaries and transact with us on a regular basis don't observe our systems, I become less, um, what's the word, amenable. Um, so and it's just really because of the volumes we deal with. So what I'd like to say to people is please use the processes that we have in place. And if those processes, you've gone through them and you're not getting the responses, you must send them to me. All right. This is one, I think we'll, this could be the, the last few ones before we wrap up from Mark Bateman. Our CIPC account was debited, uh, was debited a few times with a request from the same certificate of confirmation. How do we go about getting the money back? We dealt with this in a systematized way. Um, and last year, we res there were a lot of queries on the query system. If you haven't logged a query, or if you, ha if you have logged a query, then please send it through to me. If you haven't, please log the query first. And if you don't get a response within 10 days, send it through to me. What we need to do is issue you with a credit note, and those transactions will be reversed. Awesome stuff. I think uh, five minutes to go. This one from Amor. 
Pilate, you can now only print the MOI if you are the incorporator, which must now, okay, I think this is the comment to the other uh, guy on the chat. And then, um, and let me just pick the last one, the commissioner. Uh, from Charmaine says, I asked for copies of company docs four months ago. Where are these? Well, um, I I think in the last um, uh, chat last week, I uh, there was a question about a backlog in the disclosure section, and I said that I wasn't aware of one. But there is a backlog in the disclosure section. You, what is very important is that you submit your request mm -hmm. through uh, the website and not by email because we have no way of tracking it. They are being allocated and the manager responsible is monitoring this very closely. But right now there are a lot of requests outstanding and um, I can't give you exact turnaround times on it, but it mm -hmm. definitely shouldn't be four months. So if you haven't logged a query, you can log a query on the query resolution system. Please log a query. I know that the relevant manager looks into those queries and tries to resolve them. Um, and if you don't get the required response, please send me the email. Excuse me. Hey, sorry, bless you. The so yeah, question on co-ops. Can I do a name reservation for a co-op electronically or <coughs> do Excuse me. <laughs> bless you. Uh, did you hear that question, uh, Commissioner? Yeah, uh, you, you can do a name reservation. Okay. Um, electronically. Electronically through the name reservation system, but. Um, it doesn't give you some exclusive right. It gives you an exclusive right, I think, in terms of the name reservations. Uh, it doesn't give you an exclusive right necessarily in terms of the co-op. So okay. it is actually better just to apply for your name reservation in your co-op application and let the cooperatives department deal with it. All right, the very, very last one for tonight from Nishal says, how do we take off a member from a CC who has passed on and his estate has been finalized? Um, there are details on the website about how you need to deal with it. There is a problem with the Close Corporations Act in that it is very specific about how you can remove somebody. I think the, um, the and I, I don't want to give you the wrong information, I suggest that you look on the website or alternatively just send me an email. I'll forward it to the right person or, and I think maybe that is actually an answer, Herman, that we'd need to make available and Christoph to more people because it is one of the frequently asked questions. I just mm -hmm. don't want to answer it incorrectly right now. Okay. There is a process. All right. I think we're about to wrap it up there. Thank you very much there, Commissioner. Before, I'll come back to you for your last words. Uh, let me try and bring back Christoph and Mulelang to, to send their last words before we say their last words, rather, before we, we close the show. Hi, Chris. Yes, I'm here. <coughs> so, so um, uh, uh, my last word would be uh, for today would be that uh, we will do our best. Our commitment at Small Business Connect is to synthesize the questions and the answers that's already been given. And if there are answers, such as this question about how to remove someone from the CC membership um, that's not been answered through the shows, uh, we'll make sure that we find those answers too. Um, and uh, next week we'll report back. Um, I won't be here next week because I'll be at the event um, that Small Business Connect is hosting live with uh, Herman Mashaba. Um, but uh, we'll, we, that information will be made available through the next show and through um, the Facebook page and website. So. Um, look forward for for uh, an increased um, speed at which we will be producing that. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'm actually jealous. You got my namesake there. But anyway, moving right along. Uh, Bulela, you want to say the last words to the commissioner quickly? Oh, yes. Uh, I would like to thank the commissioner for availing herself and uh, speaking to people because we are anxious. Uh, but also I would like to remind the commissioner that uh, we are small business people, and uh, time is of, of essence to us, you know. Uh, you might be having an idea now and a little money to, to start uh, that particular idea to get running with it. 
and if things don't happen, then it just disappears and uh, you become a casualty. So uh, I think uh, things will be getting better in her department. I would like to see that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. The Commissioner, over to you. Your last words for tonight. Um, yes, thank you, Herman. Well, I, I, well, along, I, I, I hear definitely the the cry from from small businesses. I, I you know, our goal as an organisation is to continuously improve our services, and I think you know, as an organisation, we've come a long way. But there's no question that we still need to improve a lot of things and improve them by by. Um, you know, uh, significantly improve them. I just also want to thank everybody for the questions. I think this is, from our perspective, uh, uh, a very valuable um, interaction. And um, so, you know, we will endeavor to respond to all your queries. Please just bear with us because we do get a lot of them every day. Thank awesome. You. This is week two of our candid uh, conversations with the CIPC Commissioner. She'll be back next week and I'll also be here. And uh, we'll pick another one of our uh, entrepreneurs to join us on the show. Possibly also a practitioner as well. We'll see how it goes. I'll end off with a quote from Eric Thomas. No matter how hard the battle gets or no matter how many people don't believe in your dream, never give up. This is Small Business Connect. Candid conversations with the CIPC back again next week. Have yourself a beautiful week. Bye for now.